Um, our project is called Project Hope. Um, oh. Okay, so going into this project, we just came up with a few goals. They included renewing the alleyway, uniting the six communities of Hamilton, representing each of these six communities with a specific flower that we've chosen, and we want to beautify the downtown course starting with this wall. So we chose the name Project Hope, one because life equals hope and because it's a vertical garden, um, we think that flowers and plants are going to bring that hope to the wall. So we also wanted to build a vertical garden and we wanted to bring life through flowers to the alleyway. So this is just our design. This is what it's going to look like in the spring and summer. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about the mechanisms behind it. But we've also thought through what the design will look like in the winter, which is right here. Because it is using flowers, so it is important to take into consideration all seasons. So um, for the design, um, two main aspects that we really wanted to incorporate and sort of it was a major theme would be that it would be eco-friendly and at the same time it would be sustainable. So within our design, and you can sort of see it in the back of there, there are six wooden boxes containing six different flowers. Um, another part of sort of the bringing in the Hamilton community is there will be painted handprints forming like the shape of a tree and that will be going vertically and then branching out. Um, there will also be a large steel Hamilton logo as the focal point of our wall, which would be situated in the center. Um, that sort of presents Hamilton's past, future, and present and bringing everything sort of together. Um, we'll also be using moss art to create the word Garden of Dreams, which is sort of the theme of everything that we were sort of going through. Um, we'll also be using solar-powered lights because that alleyway is used frequently and we wanted sort of something sustainable and eco-friendly and, you know, the best way to do that is through solar-powered lights. So for our maintenance, um, we use two methods of irrigation. So the first one is called the Recirculating Irrigation System and this uses rainwater that's collected by a drain drainage system and water is collected in the tank at the bottom and then there will be like a pump that sends the water back up to the wall. Um, any of the excess water that is not used by the plants will return back into the filter and back into the, sorry, um, into the tank and then it will be recirculated. So this is an eco-friendly way and we will be using, well, hopefully rainwater. And that's just another way of, you know, using the environment for something for it to be sustainable. The second is the direct irrigation system. And that's where water flows directly from the drain pipes of the building. So no water tank is needed, no pump is needed. It's a lot cheaper than the first. And water um, will be channeled through the wall. And then the excess water will be collected and sent to the sewer drainage system. Okay, so I don't know if you guys know, but there are six communities that consist of the city of Hamilton. And the first community would be Ancaster. So what we wanted to do, because we wanted to project the idea of Project Hope, and what better to project hope than life and growth, and what better to project growth than flowers, because they are constantly changing, and when they die, they grow again, and they're always coming back to life, and it's trying to change in the communities, and change within the different aspects of past and present, and like industrialization, and like education stuff in all the communities. So that's why we decided what best to represent each community is a specific flower for each community. And I'll talk about it more, but we have a different flower for each community that we ourselves chose out that we think best represents a historical background and also like what we envision for the future of each community. And I'll talk about each characteristic and like why we chose it specifically. So of course the first, as you can see, would be Ancaster, that's our first community. And that's a flower we chose, and we chose this because I don't know if many of you know like the history behind it, but Ancaster used to be one of the um, oldest European communities. And the reason for this is because it was the largest industrial and commercial region that consisted of Upper Canada itself. And this was because of the water supply that was around Ancaster 
And why we chose this flower specifically is because it's very, like as you can see, it's graceful, it's simple, it's very calming, and we want to represent Ancaster through beauty because not only is there beauty in like industrialization, but there's also beauty in the nature of what Ancaster is now, which is more known as a hiking trail of like nature because there's a lot of hiking trails in there. So we kind of wanted to symbolize Ancaster through the beauty of this flower through the gracefulness of it. The next flower would be the um, lavender, lavatera, and this would represent Glanbrook. We chose this specifically because Glanbrook, I don't know if you guys know this as well, but there's an airport that's located in Glanbrook, and that's kind of Hamilton's like Destin, like, um, airport. And what we wanted to symbolized through this flower is the merging of the colors. There's two colors and you can't really tell where the colors start and where the colors stop. You can just see the merging of uh, colors. And what we wanted to portray in this flower is the fact that the community represents unity. And what better way to represent unity of the past and the future than through this flower? Because at the airport, you don't know when people from different countries or cities are coming into Hamilton. You don't know that. You just see people, and they could be from the community, they could be from a different community or city or country, and we thought that would portray unity because as a flower, you can tell where it starts or stops, just like you don't know who's from where, and that kind of creates one environment and one community, and that's what we wanted to portray. The next would be Stony Creek, and of course we chose um, the flower because Stony Creek is also kind of like the water source of the community, it provides a lot of water for agricultural growth and um, crop supplies. So we wanted something blue that would ob like obviously reflect water in itself. And what better than this? So we chose this because it shows the innovative potential that um, Snow Stony Creek can have in the future. The next one would be Dundas, and Dundas is known, like I, before it was known as Food's Paradise, but now it's known as Dundas. And basically, Dundas, there's a lot of like faculty members who work for the school or students who, you know, um, attend the school that live around that area because it's kind of close by. And why we chose the flower is because we wanted it to represent the individuality and the un uniqueness of each student and faculty member that um, attends the school. And we wanted the flower to kind of support and enhance like social experiences around different areas of student life and community growth. The next one would be Flamborough. And we chose the yellow tulip because Flamborough was previously known as uh, Waterdown, and it kind of still is actually. And it's more of a suburban, quiet area and it's home to like many farmers and stuff like that. And what we think is important for farmers is obviously sunlight and like um, having the ability to help grow crops. So we chose yellow tulips because the yellow represents the sun that would be able to help grow crops. And then we chose the orange honeysuckle for Hamilton, which is basically known as Steel City. Sorry, it's actually supposed to be a rose. rose. I made a typo. It's okay. My bad. And the other one was the orange honeysuckle. Even though that doesn't really help with the rose. But it's okay. <laughs> so it basically is known as Steel City. And we chose the red rose because it, a red rose is very unique in structure. You don't see any other flower that looks like it at all. It has very intricate petals that go in and they spread out and open out. And so we chose that. Is be why we chose that is because Steel City has multiple layers to it. As you can, like, I don't know, living in Hamilton, you can tell like through kind of experiencing the community on your own that there's different career opportunities, educational opportunities, industrial opportunities, and like work and stuff like that. And it's kind of like transforming from Steel City, which is like an industrialization area, to something different, something newer, but still keeping the idea of industrialization and working. And it's kind of bridging between the past and the future to kind of create a new present. So that's kind of why we chose the red rose because it's very unique in its shape and we think Hamilton is very unique in its shape, just like each community is very specific and different. Okay, so next we're gonna talk a little bit about the Hamilton logo because it's in the middle of our design. Not many people actually know what the Hamilton logo means and some of you might not actually recognize it. So the Hamilton logo was chosen um, when all the communities were merged and given the namesake Hamilton because it exemplifies strength and stability. 
Um, as you can see, it's a bridge forming the letter H, and it's actually named after, um, well, there's two bridges represented. There's the high level bridge, which is one of the, it represents the industrial strength and the strong heritage that Hamilton had in the past. And then the other bridge that they've chosen to represent is the Skyway Bridge, because it represents the present day and future opportunities. And it represents growth of new sectors. So as Hamilton is changing from an industrial city to one of healthcare and education. So it's kind of blending the past with the future. Um, also, there's six pillars on the bridge, and these represent each of the six communities that we just talked about. When one pillar comes out, or when, one's, um, when one community is removed, the bridge is imbalanced and it might fall. So it just goes along with supporting our whole idea of growth and how each community actually plays a vital role in Hamilton as a whole, and all of them are needed to support the growth um, of Hamilton. So now we're just going to talk a little bit about cost. OK, the feasibility of any project depends greatly on the cost of how much the project is actually going to cost. Uh, the implementate, there's four main costs. There's the implementation costs, maintenance costs, life cycle costs, and the environmental costs. Also, funding is another huge aspect. Um, so this is a breakdown of our implementation costs, which includes the flowers, everything from the steel to make uh, the logo, the handprints, such and such, the flower boxes, and also the workers, because um, we have to take into account labor as well when we think of implementation. Then this is the total of the implementation costs. Um, also including the LED light bulbs. Uh, also, we have to take into account the maintenance cost. So, how much does it cost to actually maintain this wall? So, we have weekly. There's no monthly. So, we're using volunteers to water the flowers if there's no rain in the irrigation system. And there's also yearly, which if we have harsh winters, some of the flowers will need to be replaced. But the periwinkle, which is found in every single box is actually you never will have to replace that. So that's another way. Um, so we have the implementation and the maintenance cost together, which is equal to the life cycle cost. So we chose a, life, a target span of 10 years for this project. And over the 10 years, it's expected to cost $8,225. Um, what? Oh, sorry. I know. <laughs> I can't read. Um, so the um, so at the end of this of our lifespan, the goal is to have little to no debris left behind. So by using recyclable materials like the wood, the steel can all be recycled and reused. Um, also by utilizing utilizing the drainage system, we're saving water, our resources. Uh, so the environmental cost of this project is important because we want this to not only be easy on the eye but easy on the environment as well. Um, Sorry. Last quick part, uh, it's just about funding. So there's actually a, um, an organization called Green Venture that's already present in the city of Hamilton. And they are funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation, which I've included in the picture, and the Hamilton Community Foundation. And these are, um, these, this organization is known for their work. Uh, they were supporting, uh, supporting the neighborhood and the communities with an outreach program. And this outreach program uh, involves community cleanups, and also they have a community garden team that gets people in the community, also youth from the community, to go and build these gardens all over, plants all over. So that's um, a possibility for funding for Project Hope. And also we have um, cost-reducing strategies, such as environmentally friendly, uh, LED light bulbs to bring, uh, bring the brightness to the wall, and also by using volunteers funding and anyone who's willing to donate their time, even workers that could make the boxes, the construction workers, the steel workers. Um, and the success of Project Hope relies on the funding and donations and the time that all of us have put into our projects and this proposal. Uh, so by using volunteers, we're able to keep the costs low and involving the entire community. Okay, so just in conclusion, because we're running really low on time, um, we tried to make our wall as versatile as possible, and we tried to take into consideration the longe longe longevity of it. Sorry, so we um, planned seasonal uh, durability and also um, what the wall will look like during the day and at night, and that's why we put lights in. So um, if you have any questions, if it's okay, you can come talk to us after, just so we can get on with the next presentation. Thank you.